you are not here for casualty. You are here because you want more. And this is the reason that we come in, because he wants to give in to us more. But every time I read the Bible, I can see how he can use everything, everything that's close to me, every person that's close to me, every place that I go in, he wants to fill, him up, fill me up with the anointing. He wants to take this moment, you know, and when I go in, in whatever place, he wants to fill me up with that anointing. And I have to get ready. You may be thinking you, you don't qualify to be anointed by God. I don't know if you think that you deserve this. But you know, the Bible say in Genesis 28, it's the story of Jacob. It, it God teaching me, and this is story, when God had a plan to anoint someone, is nobody can stop that. Nobody can stop those, the one that the Lord is choosing to anoint in them. Because it's his desire, it's his pleasure to anoint in you. He wants it. Because he needs you in his kingdom. He was the, you know, when I read about Jacob, he was the perfect sinner. He was the perfect liar. Is not true? I was the perfect. No. It may be you too. He was the perfect sinner. He was the perfect liar. And he was, you know, fleeing his action. He was escaping because he don't want to be, com you know, be confronted his, when his family, you know, because he lied too much with his father, with his brother. He is still what he don't has to have. And when the Lord showed me that, I can see how God qualified you to anoint in you. You have to be the more big sinner. We have to be the more bad person, the most sinful person. It's the, it's the qualified God. He, he qualified you by your sinner. And when he saw you in that way, Jacob, I saw Jacob, he, he fulfilled the requirement to be anointed by God. And I do too. I am here because he looked at me and he said, she don't have no orchard. I have to take her because she don't have hope. And he said the same about Jacob. You know, and God used everyone, everyone of your decision, everyone that you, every time that you, you fall down, he used that to take, to take you in the place that he want to you, that you can be used. And Jacob coming, you know, he was escaping. He was leaving the house. And he was uh, tired, and he finally got to a place. But he thinking that he chose this place. But let me tell you something, something that the Lord was spoken to me through this word. He prepared every place. When do you going, you know, escaping from him? He was preparing this place. There was no something that he thinking, ah, this is the better place to stay. He feels tired, but God knows when you're going to go in tired. He knows. He knows when, you know, Jonah was escaping in that boat and he was resting. He was tired. He was escaping. And he knows when you're going to go in tired. He knows what is the place that you're going to choose for rest. And he was already there. He was already there. And, you know, because he needed an encounter with God. He knew God through religion. He knew God through what he saw in his father and his mother, how they worship in God, but he don't have that encounter with God. You have to have that. And it's amazing how, you know, he used all the mistakes that he did to take him to the encounter with him. Because there's no other way that he can go there. He has to do mistake, And, and I can see, you know, before he come to this place, God was preparing everything. He put rocks, all the grass that was growing there, all the atmosphere was filling up with the presence of the Lord. It was there the anointing. That place was already anointing, preparing the encounter that Jacob going to have with God. And here is Jacob running. He said, oh, I need to escape. They want to kill me. Maybe my brother going to kill me. And then he, he was escaping and said, oh, this is the perfect place to stay. Guess what? God had this plan. 
And he preparing a big rock. And he was choosing the best rock to put his, to lay down. <laughs> he don't know that that rock was already anointed for him. That rock had already the anointing. The atmosphere was already full with the presence of the Lord. Because this is our God that we serve. I don't know if you remember when you come into Jesus. But I remember so clear. He was preparing this place before I be there. Before I come into this place, he was preparing. That's a stone where he puts his head was under the anointing of God. The grass. Everything was feeling under the glory of God. And when the, the glory of the Lord is in one place, the manifestation of his glory came. That manifestation came. And he fell to sleep, you know, for what reason? Because he wasn't ready to see the glory face to face. He wasn't ready to see the glory face to face. For that reason, he fell asleep. But that rock, they had the anointing, you know, developed in him. Vision and dream. He started to dream it. And he saw in the dream that he was in the same place. But in the same place it was, you know, it's a, um, I don't know, this, a staircase. Staircase? Okay. Escalera. More, more easy. <laughs> it was a open. He can see the heaven open. He bring to this place. He filling up with the anointing. And when the anointing of the Lord is there, the manifestation of the Lord is there. And the first manifestation is the heaven is open. Because only from heaven come in the anointing. The anointing don't come in from man. We can minister you and we can, we can declare that this anointing coming over you. But you know where coming from? From heaven. From the spirit. In the spirit of the Lord is in me, I can put my hand over you, and I am only the channel that God brings this anointing through me and put it over you. But it's coming from heaven. <laughs> and he put this man there. And he is leading and starting to dream. You know, it's amazing when the, you are under the anointing, how the gift of the spirit is starting to awake. Wait, awake. You start to dream it. It's not real that when you start to pray, worshiping God, and you have to start to have that relationship with God, he starts to open your eyes. And he opened their eyes. And that moment that he was dreaming, he saw open heaven. He saw this staircase that was descending from the sky. And he, she was, he was resting on the air. Vision. He wasn't, he don't have vision before. Because out of the anointing, you cannot see nothing. You see with the natural eyes, but you don't see with the spiritual eyes. And you know what? He wanted we saw all the time with the spiritual eyes. And then in that moment, he saw, he got a revelation, an angelical revelation. He started to see angels coming up and coming down. And for him, that was amazing. But that wasn't all. Because God sent him for the manifestation, but the final touch is he want to send in his voice. And his voice is prophetic. When he come into talking with Jacob, he say, I am Jehovah. He say, I am. I am who I am. And that's word. everyone in Israel know what does word mean. Mean the encounter the Moses with him. When he say, who are I going to tell them that you are? He says, Say to them, I am who I am. And he revealed to him, I am. He was scared because he heard his father. He heard his mother talking about the who I am, the, the, the who I am, the I am who I am. He said, oh, this is God. And he revealing himself. He said, I am the God of your parents. He started to say that Abraham and Isaac is the same God that he heard about him. But he don't have a relationship with him. You can be in the church many years. And, and soon you don't have an encounter with him. You're never going to know who is him for real. You can hear about him. But you, know, you have to know him. You have to come in close with him. And have this encounter with him. Face to face. Like he does. 
You know, he wasn't ready to see him face to face. God has to come in in a dream. And, then, and you know, and, and he started to say, in this land that you are resting, I will give it to you and to generation. I, I am so glad about God. Who is this God that this man did not qualify for his kingdom? He's not qualified. He don't feel all the requiring according our eyes. To be a man of God or a woman of God. And in some time I'm thinking about me. Why you choose me, God? Because I wasn't qualified. But uh, this man don't qualify. He was, you know, a thief. He was escaping. And here is coming, God. This lamb, and you are resting, is going to be yours. What kind of God we serve? What kind of God we serve? It's a God that always is thinking the best for you. It's the God that he don't see your mistake. It's not that he is in agreement with you, but he knows you where you're going to be. He knows what is the plan that he got for you. And he has to be sure to move you up. He has to move you up. And what is the way that he uses it? He uses the promise, the prophecy. He prophesied over him, this land is going to be yours. This land can be you for your generation. What he was telling him, you're going to be my servant. You're going to be my man. The man that ain't going to use it for greatest sin. But this man was like, a, what is he talking about? He don't see where I'm coming from. He don't know that I am escaping from my family. He don't know that I, I lie. I, t- I, I am a thief. He knows. But uh, for God, it's a privilege for him. Take one that's not qualified and doing a qualified man. And it's amazing to see Jacob hearing the voice of the Lord. Do you see? When the anointing came, it's too much important that you can get this God himself revealing to you. Every time you come into the service and, and anointing time, you have to find him and let him talk to you. Let Hearing the voice of the Lord, when everyone prophesy over you, you have to be paying attention. What do you say, Lord? I, for real, you are talking about me, that? You know, Pastor Sandy was prophesying over me, and every time God giving a prophecy, it's a compromise for me. Because I, I need to hold this word. I need to sustain the word in every moment. And in some moment, I have to be fighting and I have to sustain this word because I don't want that this word go to the floor. I want this, I want to hold in this word because I know that he comes with me, that I hold in this word to be in the place that he wanted I be. And it's something about this word is that anointing changes. He changes. When he comes into this encounter with God, personal encounter with God, he changes. Because you cannot be the same. This is no emotion. You're not coming here to emotion yourself. Only because you cry. It's not about crying. Oh, please. It's about you change inside. It's about that when do you come in, you know, the anointing had uh, the power to change you, your whole life. He, he made you go into the the other way, opposite that you was. He, the, the anointing had the power to change your whole life. The way that you think. The, the way that you act. The total course of your life. You can have plan for your life. But when you come in on the anointing, he can tell you, I am choosing you to go around the world. Lead your work. One word. One prophecy can change your life. I was so scared when the Lord said, you're going to be a pastor. No. I was so disappointed with God. Whatever. You're sending me to do whatever. But I don't want to be a pastor. Pastor, no. All my life that I serve in God in other churches, I was serving close to the pastor. And I see them crying. And I, I, I am pretty good to hear people. I was sitting there 
And my pastor, he was telling me all that he had in his heart. I go to my house, and I was crying in front of the Lord for that man for 20 years, supporting him. <laughs> he was, and when I see that, I don't want to be a pastor. I saw them with hungry, and I saw the people that they don't care. I don't want to be a pastor, Lord. Tell me I'm going to be other thing, but not, don't send me to be a pastor. Where well, here I am. And guess what? I love it. I love to be a pastor. I think it's a better job than all the kingdom of God. I love this. Why? Because under the anointing, that anointing had the power to change what you think and change all your plan that you got already. Figure out. You are planning this, you are planning this, you are planning. All your life is already planned. Oh, way to be in the anointing. Many things can change. And you have to be open. That he can change whatever he wants. Because it's better plan. What I got, what he got. You know, I work in 10 years in a credit union. And my boss, he was a nice guy. A senior. I'm very senior. Too much. But he has something in his heart. He respect the anointing. One day the Lord spoke to me and said, that's going to be happen in the company. And I go to him and I knock the door and say, I had a message from God for you. He looked at me, for me? He was thinking that I'm going to say something that he was doing wrong. And I say, something come. God showing me the people are going to rob the company. He showed me that in a, in a dream. I saw so clear. I want to pray for all the company. I want to pray. And he was, ah, you know, Lydia, okay. Okay, you pray. But he let me pray for myself. And I say, it's okay. That's night. In the night, the rob people come, the thief. And they go inside to the company. Well, I was thinking that he don't pay me attention. But he take all the money out and he put it in, in, the, in the bank. He take, he, he did. And when they come in and the company was open, broken window and everything, you know what he told me? You know what? When do you leave? What about if it is true? That's coming to his mind. What about if it's true? It's better I do something. You know, and one of my partners, she, she was selling jewelry, you know, thin and gold and everything. And she got in his pot and they robbed that. There are many things. And it was so neat because after that, he understand that under the anointing, God can speak to you. He speaks with Jacob. He tells Jacob what is going on, what I'm going to be in the future. He can tell you that. It's so important to come into under the anointing because he want to talk to you. He want to reveal to you not only himself. He want to reveal to you your future, what is going to happen. And we need to be in advance because, you know, the devil don't, he, don't, he know what is his work. And he want, he want to bother you every day. He want to stop in you what you are doing. That you don't trust in God and you say, no, God is not helping me. Of course God is helping to you. But we know what is his job. His job is trying to stop you. <laughs> and it's something I know about this anointing, that he al aligned me, myself, in the will of God. Every time I come into his presence and I am doing something wrong, I don't, I, I don't go worry because someone, a prophet, coming to me and say, you are doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Because sometimes the prophet can come into giving to you exhortation. How many receive this word? An exhortation. And sometimes the Lord spoke to me to exhort me. And what was that worm producing me? Oh, I am under the anointing and can say, okay, Lord, I'm going to change this in my life. I need to do it. And Jacob had this experience. When he was there, he understood that he needed to change her life. He said, is this God in this place? Look like this place is full of the anointing, he said. 
It's a heaven in the earth. It was real. I need to shame. What are you doing? What are you doing with the anointing that you receive every day that you come here? What are you doing with the word that the Lord giving to you every day? You are responsible for that word. We are. We have to most obey to the Lord and what he asking for us. You know, I can see how I have to run every day, you know, to that anointing because I want the power of the Lord manifesting in me. I don't want to run to people and depending on their anointing because God want to give it to me, my own anointing. Because I have so much people around me. And many people, they are growing right now. And I need to support them. I need to sustain them. I need to bless them. And you need to do that. You need to say to the Lord, okay, Lord, I want it. I want, I want to be responsible with them. You know, that's a stone that Jacob find and he puts his head. That's a stone change his top. Because that's a stone is a figure, it's a shadow of Jesus Christ. Now, he was resting in that stone. Who can rest in a stone? I want a nice pillow to sleep. But he find that stone. And that stone was under the anointing. It's the same. We have Jesus now. He is our stone. And it's in that stone that I rest. And I feel so good. Because he is the one that do everything. And that's the stone Jacob was activated in the dream and the vision. And Jesus, you are activated in his manifestation. He want to give it to you all. You don't, you don't have to be in his presence only asking for little. You have to be with hungry. Give me more. Give me more. What more you got? Give me more, Lord. I don't know what more you got there. Can you? I can see you have more. He was looking, and that's, and that's, what was the word? It's there, it's there for me. It's there way. It does. He was looking there, he was looking the angel going and back. And now as I say, those angels, they go with my petition, and the one they coming down, they coming with my answer. He was there, and he realized that under the anointing you had all. It's no religion. It's not to fear one day in the church. It's to come in to know him. It's to come in to be ready to transform your life. Only his presence can do that. And you have to get ready. To get hungry. Say, give me more, Lord. I am not satisfied. I know it's more in your presence. For the reason when Jesus come into my life. He activated in me everything. And I, I began to dream in big. I wasn't dreaming in big until Jesus coming to me. I was resting in that stone. That stone changed the life of Jacob. And it's a stone in your life. Jesus. What about the stone in the hand of David? What about that stone in the hand of Laban, the Davies? He take that stone, you know, it was like this. It wasn't rustic, it was like this. And you know, I, I got to look in because I, I like to see. And that rock that's coming like this is because the water was running so much that they come in like this. It was perfect. It's a rock that was already worked out. For the water. You know what's the water? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and Jesus working together. The rock is Jesus. He was in the hand of David. A man of faith. And he take the rock. And that rock is your faith. And he saw the giant. He said, what? What do you say? I want to tell you something. Today the bear gonna eat, gonna eat your all your body. I say good. <laughs> I hope. They gonna eat on your body, but also I gonna cut your head. And I gonna raise your head like a trophy. You know for what reason? 
because he knows that our rock has the power in his hand because he wants a man of faith. You had the rock in your hand. And more than your hand in your heart is Jesus Christ. He's your rock of faith, the stone of faith. He takes us a stone. He appoints into the face. Here, right here. Why right here? Because the thought that the devil had in his mind, that he thinking that he had the power, he want to break down. You are not the winner. You are a loser. He take that rock and all the loser coming down. And amaze me how they be running over him. He run because you have to be bold. You have to be brave. It's not only that he fall down, but you need to destroy. He need to destroy. He take his arm and he cut it the head and he get up the head. You know what that produce? That rock produce faith. It was the anointing, the one that make this giant coming down. It was the anointing in a man of faith. Are you a man of faith? Are you a woman of faith? Yes, you are. You have Jesus in your heart. You have all the faith that you need. You are on the dust anointing. And you can take this rock. And you can appoint it to this giant. I don't know which one you have. But you have to, you know, appoint it and do it. And say, in the name of Jesus. Because it's his name. The one that has the power. It's so nice to have the anointing. Can you stand up? I know you want that I go in longer, but I don't go longer today. He want to do whatever he want. His anointing is here. God bring in my mind the rock with Moses. Moses received a message from God and he say, talk to the rock. Talk to the rock. And the water coming down. But you know what? And sometimes, some rock, sun is down, they are. Because they want to flow river, the living water. And God's doing it because he, he want to do the miracle. And he want to support the man of God. But the man of God was loose. He was hungry. He was tired with his people. And he beat the rock. It's not in your strength. It's about what you prophesy. Under the anointing. You don't need to use your strength. The way that you always do the thing. You only have to use words. Words that coming from the Lord. And under the anointing. He talked to you. Raise your hand out. And close your eyes. I don't have to do nothing. He is here. He want to fill you up. He want an encounter with you. He don't need intermediaries. He only needs you. You in the place. And this place is full. With the anointing of God. With praises to the Lord. It's open heaven and it's night. The heaven is open. And I don't know if you can see this escalera. I don't know if you can see it. But I can see in the spirit. This is the place. That the Lord had opened heaven. And the angel is starting to come down. They are coming down. And they are filling all this place with his anointing. He is already here before you come. He was already here in that seat. That seat was anointing before you came. That 
seat was ready. And you don't know you're going to sit in that seat. But God knows where you're going to be. And he say, I feel not the seat because I want to touch you. I want that you had an encounter with me. Can you start to see him? Because he is come. His voice is come. He want to prophesy. He want to prophesy over you. This is the time, say the Lord, that I open the heaven for you. In whatever place that you're going to be, it's going to be open heaven for you. Because before you go into that place, my anointing going to be there. Because I already know where my son and my daughter are going to be. Before you go to your work, the anointing going to be there. Sharaba say Rebecca Sai. Hiro Saba Kere Saba by sea. Hire Yababa say Rebeyama. Sorry, Sam. 